February the 17th, 2008 was a, uh, a day we'll never forget, and it has completely uh, affected our lives um, for the good. But when we got the phone call that John had been hit on his motorcycle, uh, obviously fear gripped us pretty quickly. We got to the hospital, and we were there ahead of the ambulance. Uh, we didn't know how serious it was. As a matter of fact, I never really did realize how serious it was until later. When they found John on 10th Street, his legs were wrapped around his head. That's what we've been told, uh, because his pelvis was uh, broken in three places, and that um, he was not expected to make it to the hospital. <clears throat> when the ambulance pulled up, they got the gurney out, and John was trying to get out. He was conscious and lifting himself out, and and moving and, and they said please tell your tell your son to calm down and be still so I told him to lay back down and be still because he was hurt I didn't know he had a broken pelvis I didn't know he had a, a traumatic brain injury I didn't know that he had a severe brain injury at all the emergency guy came to me and he says is that your son and I said yes it is he said was that his mother and I said yes he will tell the mom to stay outside and it'd be better for her not to come in here because I don't think your son's gonna make it. It would be a miracle if he makes it. Well, that really made my day. <clears throat> and, uh, but I, I appreciate the man being very honest with me. It was very serious. I still never knew how serious it really was. The first thing they needed to do was to evaluate him, go in surgically, he had a broken pelvis in three places. He did have a brain injury. They didn't know how severe it was. But he was bleeding out of both ears, uh, which is, meant that his skull was fractured on both sides, which is very bad. So apparently he, he hit, and his, his head hit the, the pavement in the back of his head. Now things began to move uh, pretty rapidly, and uh, they took him in immediately uh, to surgery. We began to get together, and we all went upstairs. And I just sat down in a chair with everybody, and of course everybody was very concerned, and, and uh, they were looking at me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like I'm supposed to have some kind of answer, but I did know that God said, we've got to have a word. And the first thing we did was start praying for God to give us a word. Precious Lady Sandy Dearman came and said, I've got 2 Kings 4.26, which says uh, the Shumanite woman said, uh, they asked her, is it well? And she said, it is well with me, it is well with my husband, it is well with my, with my son, all is well. And then the second scripture we got from Rebecca Troche, I'll never forget it. Psalm 118, 17. <laughs> and the Word of God, 17 in the Bible means victory, and the Word of God says right there that I've ordained that you would live and not die and stand and declare the things of God. And I was so thankful for that. And I uh, didn't know really truly how powerful and how important those words would be uh, as we began to walk the next 11 months. knew that God could do this and said, we don't go by what we see, we go by what we know. And we know that God heals and we know that He does miracles and we're going to believe and we're going to see God do this. We just believed that next day was going to be the miracle, that next day was going to be when John walked. I had set a five day time for God to do what God needed to do and I felt like John was going to get up and walk out of that hospital because when they asked me about him, I said, John's going to walk out of the hospital. He's going to walk out of here. He's going to be just fine. God didn't do it on Friday. As a matter of fact, Friday morning we were going in for our third brain surgery and I was really shook about that and I asked God, I said, how much more can a man handle? I'll never forget it because I read Genesis 22 and I read where Abraham uh, told Isaac, uh, son, God will provide. But I had to come to a place to where I got out of the way and said, God, if you take John, I know that's the best. And if you leave John, I know that's the best. God sp spoke to me. Uh, I'll never forget it. And he said, James, he said, I didn't take Isaac. And he said, I'm not going to take John. A little while later, the doctors came out and asked us to come out in the hall. And both doctors were working on John's brain that day. And uh, the doctor said we left him open for another 15 minutes. We, we did have to take some brain matter, and, uh, but the bleeding has stopped. It was like God just confirmed the words over and over in our lives that 
He just knew where we were. He wanted us to be assured that he was directing our path. And so one of the nurses asked me as we were leaving, well, what word do you have? And I said, um, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And that was Matthew 7, 7. When we walked, in, walked into Methodist Hospital and on the mural, a beautiful tile mural back behind the information booth, that scripture was on the wall. And I went, God, you are that big. You care that much about us. In walking in this, the devil kept telling me that I was going to walk into that room and John was going to be dead. And I was going to see his jaw wide open and he was going to be looking at the ceiling. Now, I want to tell you, every time I went to see John, which was several times a day, the enemy was speaking that to me every step of the way. I let Jan walk ahead of me because I didn't want to see that sight. And then one precious friend of mine saw me as I was down there in John's room and looked at me and she said, James, you got fear all over you. And I said, yeah, I know I do. I got fear all over me. You're right. And I knew what it was. But when I confessed it, I got released from the fear. But they were telling us uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, first of all, they didn't think he was going to live. Well, then we knew he was going to live. But then he'll never walk. He'll never talk. You know, he'll be a vegetable uh, all of his life. Best case scenario, maybe a wheelchair, but never have a job again or anything. Of course, that's not true. And so we all got pretty quiet, and then God just really prompted me to tell the doctor. But we said, we have a word, and we believe that God, God told us that John will stand and declare the works of the Lord. And um, we're not going to say that you have to t agree with that, but you would agree that if God chose to do that, he could do that. And he said, oh, yes. He said, I, I would agree with that. So the day I went to the hospital and we were going to an acute care hospital, I looked at his uh, records and had a big happy face. And I went, what is this? And it said, Tear, the Institute of Rehab and Rehabilitation had come and he had passed. So as we went that day and got to the rehab hospital, they looked at us and they said, well, did you bring his workout clothes? And we were like, he's in a coma. <laughs> and they go, but he's going to be working out. He's going to, we're going to be working on getting him awake and getting him up. And it was just like such a breath of fresh air because they didn't tell us how bad it was. They just said, we, we see miracles here all the time and we're going to believe with you. They were there with us and they were teaching us and they were instructing us how to work with John. It took two people just to get him on the lift and so he wouldn't, we could bend his legs and move him and his neck was way, way turned down. Our goal was to start getting John to walk and that was where we were so excited to see because we had declared and decreed over John that he would walk out of the hospital. And so we began to see him moving that left side more because it had been paralyzed and he had not moved that left side. And then walking with a, a tall uh, mirror, he was being able to you know, stand up tall and, and being able to engage and walk. And we had a lot of people around him. He was six, he's six foot five, so it was a, a big feat for him to walk. And, and he would just say he remembered those, those times feel, feeling like he was so heavy. And, so hard to move, but he knew that was what he wanted to do, that that was his goal. So by December 25th, we were um, excited that we had a uh, day pass on the 27th of December to be able to go and be with the family for Christmas in the apartment. We learned to transfer him out of the wheelchair into the car, and he got in the car, put the seatbelt on, and did amazing. He was ready to go. So he got to the apartment and he was so excited to see everybody and he knew to open Christmas presents, he knew that the kids were all there and he was just amazing to watch. One day on uh, January 21st we had a new occupational therapist and she came in and she looked at him and she said, John, who is this? And he looked at me and he said, Mom. And I went, ah, oh, John, that's it. I said, you can do that. You can say, praise the Lord. He said, praise the Lord. And I said, you can say, hallelujah. He said, hallelujah. And they looked at me and he said, uh, do you have a, your cell phone? And I went, yes, I do. And he said, well, I need it. And I said, why do you need it? And he said, I need to call everybody and tell them that I'm talking. And I said, you're exactly right. You sure do. So that was the beginning of, we said he's a man of, of very, very many words and he says he's always making up for that year that he didn't get to talk. He didn't drop words, he didn't have a memory problem, he remembered long-term memory, he remembered college days, he remembered uh, 
As a child, he remembered so many wonderful things that we were so blessed. We didn't know we would get that. So we were so blessed to see what God had done and just to see how he just completely restored him. And so the therapist, the speech therapist came and asked me, he said, why do you think that you got this done like the week before you were leaving here? And I said, well, the way we had prayed is that you all would see the miracle. He actually put the wheelchair up and he walked out of the hospital and um, came home and we never used the wheelchair. It was amazing. We sent it after a month. We sent it back because we didn't need the wheelchair. But he was so motivated and so driven every day. Uh, to this day, he has not ever gotten up and said, no, I want to stay in bed all day. I, I just can't do it. I, I don't have any you know, strength to go forward. He has gotten up with an agenda each day to move forward, to get better than he was the day before. God is really trying to reveal Himself to you. Uh, he is a wonderful God, a loving God, a precious God, and He loves us so much. What I've learned through this is that God loved John so much. It broke his heart that John got hit on his motorcycle and got really, really seriously injured. But thanks be to God that He has allowed for everything to work back together and all things work together for good for John to come back and be strong and to be healed and be whole again and to be a husband and to be a daddy. God's just continually healing his mind. The process is happening. It's taking some time, but he is a miracle in progress, and that's why we call it a miracle in progress. God is intimately involved in it with us. You're not walking by yourself. God is walking with you. And I uh, just want to thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. And we love you, and Jesus loves you. God can do anything wherever you're at in your life or whatever you need. God is still in the miracle producing business as you can see I'm sitting here talking to you via video and um, he can do the same thing in your life. I am no more different than anybody out there watching this.